Hi guys, it's Devin here, and I'm here to tell you about the results of our survey. So, we made a link to our survey and asked seniors at Panther Creek how many colleges they applied to and sent it out via Twitter, group messages, etc. And as a result, that survey was used. We used voluntary response. Okay, this means that the people that saw our survey only went through with it if it was convenient for them, so it was voluntary. And in our study, the population was Panther Creek, and the sample was seniors. When these two groups disagree, then that can lead to bias in an overall survey. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> our sample question was, how many colleges do you apply to? The mean of our sample was 4.15. The median of our sample was 4. The mode of our sample was 5. And our quartiles were 3 and 5. Now how did we find these? Good question. The mean is all the numbers added together divided by the amount of numbers. Our median is in the middle of the numbers. Our mode is the most common number. And our quartiles are quartiles. Hey guys, I'm Lauren. Um, so to expand on what Elizabeth said with the quartiles, so we have our quartile one, which is our lowest point that we had in the, um, in the data that we had, so that's one. Quartile four is the highest point that we had, which is 14. And then like Elizabeth explained, we have three and five for quartiles two and three, and then four is going to be the median. So to find the quartiles two and three, we just take the data between one and four, list it all out, and find the median between that, which is how we got three. And then same with four and 14, which is how we got five. And then we also have to calculate the interquartile range, which is the IQR. That is two. All you have to do for that is take Q3 and Q2 and then subtract the lower one from Q3. So I'm here to explain standard deviation. So this is the formula to find it. It's the sigma, so you add all of the x minus the mean and square it, add all of those up, divided by n, which is the number of um, data points that we have, then take the square root of all of that. So that's how you find standard deviation. This is going to be the sign for standard deviation, and with all of our data, we got 2.39 as our standard deviation, 5.71 as the variance, so that's basically just the standard deviation squared. So, onto the normal bell curve graph. So, you're always going to put your mean in the middle, so that is 50% of the data on either side. So, then what you're going to do, you're going to take your standard deviation and add and subtract it on either side. So when you subtract it over here, you get 1.76, subtract it again, negative 0.63, and then again, negative 3.02. But if we're going to add our standard deviations, we're going to get 6.54, then 8.93, and then 11.32. It's seven here again, and I wanted to show you the frequency distribution graph that we made. And um, this side represents all of the data points that we got for the number of possible schools people apply to. And then on this side, we wrote how many times somebody had answered that. So eight people said that they had applied to one school and four people said they had applied to two and so on and so forth. Oh. Hi guys, it's Devin here. No, okay, no. <laughs> Hello, Elizabeth. Our sample for the question Uh, and square root it. So to do that, or in that, we I messed that up. Oh. Thanks. Thanks.